Get in the game with NFL Sunday Ticket from Rev TV. You'll get every game every Sunday afternoon in crystal clear HD. That's over 220 football games for the entire regular season. Plus, NFL Sunday Ticket gives you up to eight live games on one screen with Game Mix. You'll get that died and woke up in football heaven experience when you include NFL Red Zone, a channel dedicated to every scoring play from every game and all your fantasy football teams. Get in the game with NFL Sunday Ticket. Call 601-8992 today. The Transport and Aviation Minister on the defensive once again. This as the Long Island MP claims she was silenced in Parliament. The harrowing tale of a Jamaican man wrongfully detained at Her Majesty's Prisons Plus. Donations continue to pour in for storm victims. We've got those stories and a whole lot more tonight. I'm Bonnie Toot and NB12 starts now. Topping news tonight, Transport and Aviation Minister Glennis Hannah Martin was in defense mode once again today as she addressed the growing controversy surrounding the Met Department's Doppler radar in the House of Assembly. Hannah Martin also hit out at Fort Charlotte MP Dr. Andre Rollins, who questioned if government is orchestrating a cover-up of the matter. Dana Smith reports. The Transport and Aviation Minister said the Met Department has been brought into public disrepute and forced to defend itself against a journalistic onslaught. The journalist accuses me, however, of attacking forecasters as calling them incompetent. And I never use these words, Mr. Speaker, but this is what the summary says, that I attacked them, that I called them incompetent, that they were strangers to the truth. Mr. Speaker, I invite you and all members to review my comments when I lay it on the table. The issue in question, Speaker, however, is not the forecasters, as the managing editor is seeking to assert, but it is the managing editor of the National Guardian who put out as fact in a daily newspaper <coughs> that Bahamia, to the Bahamians and the world at large, and that they are expected to, in, to rely upon as, as reliable information, it was not only an unreliable, but it was erroneous, Mr. Speaker. Hannah Martin in Parliament today once again maintained the radar was working at all times. This despite veteran forecaster Wayne Neely stating yesterday he stands by what he said and will not back down. But he's not the only one. In the Guardian report, multiple forecasters expressed concern that the radar was not working. One person said, the damn radar is not working, period. My God, we got to stop. While another said he was so distressed. And another person added, major hurricane, no hurricane forecasters meeting yet, no radar, no trans, poor leadership. At a press conference on Monday, Hannah Martin slammed the Guardian report as completely untrue and suggested Neely lacked credibility and that the forecasters were incorrect. Fort Charlotte MP Dr. Andre Rollins also raised questions about the Met Department's radar in the House of Assembly this morning, but he was rebuffed by Hannah Martin, who accused him of being prone to propaganda moments. Obviously, uh, this matter has become very contentious. I'm asking through you if the minister would state categorically that, as far as she is aware, there was complete operability of the radar equipment at the Met Department, sufficient to allay any concerns that there is in fact no cover-up on the part of the government with respect to this matter. Thank you, Honorable Member. So you, you speak Member for Anderson, you are not under no obligation to... Oh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I just gave a very detailed, I, I'm, I think the member was there, a very detailed, you want me to give the summary again? I gave a very detailed, I'm still on my feet today, direct, I gave a very detailed to response to the member's um, questions and the, the, the suggestion of a cover-up, Speaker, you know, I, I find quite offensive. It is. Remember, for Fort Charlotte, the, the chair will not well, allow any, any further interjections. But Rollins would not be deterred from his cover-up question. He noted multiple forecasters said the radar was not working. Persons who work below the minister have clearly indicated that there was a failure of the radar equipment. It is their word against Very the well. minister. Very they well. are not here to defend themselves. Thank you, Honorable Member. And it, it, is, it, it is important to acknowledge that there is no... Remember, 
member, it, this, this, you know, this is a bit out of order. Member to come in here with his propaganda moments when he gets the microphone and he, he does it quite a bit in his speaker. We don't, a lot of us don't get that kind of latitude, speaker. But the, 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 the assertion that I, the, that I made in this parliament are based on the facts that I will document by, when I lay in this parliament, speaker. And the, I have explained the source, primary source, that, that the, the, the managing editor relied on. Echoing comments she made at an earlier press conference regarding the radar controversy, Hannah Martin maintained the radar was working prior to and during Joaquin. Reporting for NB12, I'm Dana Smith. Long Island Member of Parliament Loretta Butler-Turner was reduced to tears today after she claims the voice of her constituents was silenced in the House of Assembly. Butler-Turner says House Speaker Dr. Kendall Major denied her the opportunity to speak in Parliament on the devastation caused in her constituency by Hurricane Joaquin. She accused government of being callous and out of touch and asserted Parliament is disgracefully undemocratic. I am the only opposition person in this parliament that represents a constituency that was so devastated. Additionally, Long Island represents three-fifths, three-fifths of the people that have been affected. These are my people. These are the people I, I don't, they voted for me to represent them. If you feel and see the devastation that they have gone through, if you relive what they have gone through, you will feel the way that I feel. It is a sad, sad day when I cannot speak for the people that asked me to come here to represent them. It's a very sad day. With tears in her eyes, Butler Turner called it a sad, sad day when she cannot speak for the people who selected her to represent them in Parliament, despite the suffering they endured during and after Hurricane Joaquin's passage. The Long Island MP said House Speaker Dr. Kendall Major asked her to leave his office after he denied two humble requests made by her to address Parliament on behalf of hundreds of Long Islanders affected by the Category 4 storm because he felt her comments would be too contentious. Butler Turner vented her frustration on Facebook, calling Parliament undemocratic, a statement Major seemed to agree with. And I thought that I should have an opportunity to speak to the Bahamian people very comprehensively as to what has happened in these islands. And you, sir, told me emphatically that you ended the meeting that I had with you and I would not have the opportunity to speak. Hence, I posted that this is a most undemocratic procedure in this house. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. You're correct. Statements and communication by ministers. Speaking with reporters outside the House of Assembly, the Long Island MP asserted democracy has been silenced. She pointed out that none of the MPs allowed to speak in Parliament have constituents who were affected by the storm, something she finds egregious. This is a matter of national importance. Why can I not speak to the worst devastation that we have had in our country's history in over 150 years? I am not being ridiculous. I have held my tongue. I have been supportive of the government. And they have literally denied me the opportunity to speak about what is actually happening. Butler Turner says it is blatantly obvious the Christie administration is out of touch and dropped the ball, even before Hurricane Joaquin hit the Bahamas. She threatened to expose what she called government officials' many missteps. The government has truly not done its part. I didn't want to make it political, but the fact that they've now denied me this opportunity, I think that I'm going to have to reveal all of the missteps that have gone down in not just um, being proactive in preventing um, or mitigating against what we went through, but I'm going to have to open everything and show where they've actually let the Bahamian people down totally. Meantime, hundreds of families were displaced by Hurricane Joaquin, according to Prime Minister Perry Christie, who released figures on the level of devastation caused on the central and southern islands. He also gave an update on relief efforts. In terms of private homes that were destroyed, the Department of Social Services has reported the following. Aquins 123, Crooked Island 50, Rumkey 23, San Salvador 227, Long Island 413. And just repeat those numbers. In terms of private homes that were destroyed, and 
speaker. Athens 123, and I'm assuming in varying degrees of severity, Crooked Island 50, Rumkey 23, San Salvador 227, Long Island 413. This is a continuing exercise, and based on their findings, the government will respond in kind as a part of the work of the National Restoration and Recovery Unit. This will be done in the shortest possible time, as the primary consideration of my government is to house and restore the physical comforts of our citizens. Christy said NEMA will assist with rebuilding efforts. In the meantime, officials have purchased five homes on wheels and seven mobile trailer homes, which will be temporarily assigned to local families and government workers while construction and repairs take place. Christy also announced today that Japanese government has donated more than a million dollars to hurricane relief. I wish to <coughs> announce also this morning that NEMA has received notification through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that the Japanese government, through the Japanese aid program, has made a grant of $1.7 million to assist with disaster recovery. And here I would like to single out also, Mr. Speaker, the work of Sedema. Um, and for the purpose of that, the Japanese government, Mr. Speaker, making a donation of disaster preparedness and response equipment and um, with immediate effect. In other news, it's been less than a week since Matthew Sewell was released from Her Majesty's prison after spending nine years behind bars for crimes he reportedly did not commit. Today, he recounted his horrifying experience and alleged he was beaten and had to sleep with rats. Kyle Joaquin has the story. Matthew Sewell says the nine years he spent in and out of Her Majesty's prisons are nine years that he will never get back. He first came in at the age of 18 and was last week released at the age of 27. He says his dream of joining Jamaica's Defense Force is no longer a possibility. Matthew Sewell entered the Bahamas legally on June 10, 2006 to visit his father, Clive, for three weeks. However, that short visit turned into a nightmare 10 days in when a neighbor falsely accused him of the rape of a six-year-old girl. He remained in custody for two years, and during that period, he got a harsh experience of what life at Her Majesty's prison is really like. One fella jeeped me. Jeeped me and pushed, pushed me to the wall, hit me to the wall. And the residents say, hey, let's beat, let's beat this fool, this rapist. One, one man said, hey, we can't beat him. I don't know if he's he guilty or not. And the rest of the man said, yeah, we don't care. We're going to beat him up. They beat, beat, beat me with a call officer. Officer never look, even officer never look back. They never look back. So an officer was there, just turned his back. They never look back. And my officer man just beat me in the man said, hey, you kill him in there. During that time, Sewell said he contemplated suicide. He was released on bail on May 2nd, 2008. However, his release was short-lived when he was arrested and charged with the rape of a girlfriend on April 9th, 2009. He would spend the next four years behind bars. It's very inhumane. Uh, the water will be it with. I, I, I hate to drink the same way. It will drink. There, there was a machine up there that re, 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 re process the water. I, I see I in drink. the black, there was a hole. The rat was coming to sell, cover food. Even, even my, when my friend was up there, the rat bite off half and two. I have my friend, half and two, right by it off. Up there, you have Santa P, a crowd in the cell, a bite us. Santa P. Up there, be leaking and rainfall. The cell be flooding out. Oh, we beard. We beard, we beard, we want small amount of water like that, we beard in. Water, this, this much water we beard in up there. Siwa was granted bail in August 2013 and was arrested in October, accused of housebreaking and murder. Those charges were dismissed on October 31st, 2014, after it was revealed that Sewell was actually already in custody when those crimes were committed. However, despite Justice Bernard Turner ordering Sewell's release, he was taken to the Carmichael Road Detention Center on November 1st, 2014, on a committal order that his attorney Fred Smith QC argued was invalid. He was released last Friday after a writ was issued by Supreme Court Senior Justice Stephen Isaacs. But Sewell came to tears today as he described the feeling of being free after losing nine years of his life. So what, what went through your mind when the judge told you you were free? <laughs> 
Seawall says now, at the age of 27, he wants to go to school and find a job here in the Bahamas. However, his father, still hurt by what happened to his son, says he just wants him to go home to Jamaica and finally get his life started there. No, 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 no. I don't think so. No, man. No, man. Eh, eh. My son. I know, man. I don't want him to find a job here. You want him to go back? No, man. man to this country, do it, my son. Huh? No, man. I want my son to go, man. I don't want my son to talk about it, you know. No work here. I want my son to go home. I could have never seen my son work here. I feel justice and feel joy. No. At the moment, there aren't any talks of a lawsuit being filed. Sewell and his father say they just don't want to see this happen to anyone else. Reporting for NB12, Kyle Joaquin. You're watching the best in Bahamian news. There's more when NB12 returns.